Hello everyone, welcome to Scorpion Venom Studio Games. I was requested to make a video about Kid Bash 3D, about 3D models, so I decided to go ahead and uh, make a quick tutorial. We're gonna go ahead and download one of the Savage packages under my account. We're gonna choose the FBX and OBJ format, and we're gonna download this kit. Now, I already have it downloaded on my PC, but for demonstration purposes, I'll show you how it's done. So, it downloads a zip file. Once you open it, you're going to go ahead and uh, extract to. So, you want to go ahead and create a new folder. So, we're going to call this one Savages. Now, if I've previously extracted this before. This is just purely for demonstration purposes. On how to extract zip files so once that's done we're going to import all these folders and files into our game let's go ahead and close this up you can see we have savage and savages so this is an older version of the same project i'm just going to go ahead and delete one of them and keep the newer version we have a texture folder uh, FBX, OBJ file formats. Now over here you, you will want to create a new folder and if you don't I want to show you what's going to happen if you are to import this into just a content folder. Uh, here do we have FBX and OBJ format files. Make sure you go with FBX format for your Unreal Engine. Go ahead and press open. Now it's going to start importing all the meshes from that project. Now the window will pop up says FBX import options. I would leave everything the way it is. Uh, you can change the settings if you would need to. Uh, here I'm going to kick for this static mesh at none because I don't have any LODs available for these meshes. And also I'm going to keep that at ignore. Keep all the boxes the way they are. Not going to combine any meshes. And under where it says normal import methods, you can change the options, but I'm going to keep this one under import normals. And if you scroll down here, you, it shows you the uh, FBX file information, uh, what it's used for, and currently being created on, and stuff like that. So we're going to go ahead and import it all. And click import. Now it's been done, and I got different warnings and couple errors. Now, if you read, it, it says that uh, some of these meshes degenerate tangent base bases, which will uh, result in incorrect shadings. So I've looked a little bit into it, and um, haven't had a chance to fix this yet. But I haven't had any issues with the materials. And this two right here actually could not be created because of all the polygons are degenerate. So the wall pikes and pike stands lashings um, meshes would not be available at the at this moment. But going back, and if I were to show you another example of uh, the Egypt city that I will be importing in the game as well, we're going to choose FBX and OBJ, and I want to show you something. A little bit different. I'm uh, gonna go ahead and download the kit. Now, what I tried to do is to see if I could fix that uh, tangent issue to see if I have imported the file incorrectly, but that isn't the case. And if I were to go back to my main folder. We're going to go ahead and open up the Egyptian zip file. And we're going to do the same thing. Extract to. Now it's extracting to the Egyptian city folder. Or the Egyptians. They're here. And then if you look at the properties, it's at 766 megabytes. And we're going to go ahead and import FBX again but this time with different type of normals and see if we can include the tangents in, into it as well. 
and see if that will fix our problem with the shading. So this time I'm going to actually create a folder and put everything into it. So we're going to call it Egyptian city. And this is what you want to do. Make sure you open that up instead. And then you would want to import the project into it. And don't put it into the content because then it will drop all the materials into it or all the meshes. So go ahead and uh, choose your package, which will be the FBX. Once it imports all the meshes, right here under normal, you can change to import normals and tangents. And then once you press import or import all, uh, the idea was to see if it was going to fix the tangent issue when it imports all the products, but uh, all the meshes, should I say. But unfortunately, it uh, did not, and it's not going to. So in this demonstration, I figured I'll include this so that way you could try it. Maybe this will be different on your platform, but or should I say on your PC, but on mine, it did not uh, fix the issue. So if anyone knows how to fix that, please let me know in the link below. But I still get the same uh, wording, should I say, or a message. But it didn't fix anything. So we're going to go ahead and create another copy of this project. So this time we're going to create Egyptian City OBJ because I want to show you why you do not need to import that into your uh, game or your engine. And we're going to import it with all the tangents and all that. It's going to still give me the same issue, but if you look, and of course it's going to have to do the auto saving, but if you look at the actual meshes, they are not real meshes. This is just more of a mesh scene that was used to promote the product, I believe, or something that could be used to create a, a specific part of a city or a mit or actual structure, but not actual meshes that you can use to recreate specific part of the city. And uh, let me show you the demonstration what I mean by that. So if you actually click on one of these meshes and I were to zoom into it, that right now currently there's no textures, but if you look at it, it looks like an upside down uh, s part of the model and it's not fully rendered because it doesn't have the rest of the floor or the ceiling. So it kind of sits in a really weird position. So these are not really full models if you are to download OBJ format files. So therefore, I would avoid that. Unless you have a purpose to use it for. But we're going to delete this because I don't really need it. This was just for demonstration purposes only. Let's go ahead and back and continue on our work. Uh, village city part. So now we've imported all the meshes. And uh, this is the Black Mountain Top that I've talked about on my website where the orcs going to be located at. They're going to be uh, all the way top of the mountain. I will be using the landscape brush tools to recreate uh, some of the landscape here. I just want to flatten out the surface right now. Uh, on the bottom right, it's compiling shaders right now anyway, so we're down to 50. While that's done, I am trying to um, figure out what brush I'm going to go with. I'm going to use these alpha brushes and try to just smooth out the surface so that I can build a small city or should I say a fortress that the works going to be located at. Um, I was talking about the mining for the different materials and resources. So I feel, I feel like the t top of the mountain is a very strategic location for them to be at. And this is just for demonstration purposes. Of course, we're going to build a city here or whatever it might be, a village, I don't know. So you can use different alpha brushes. So there's one right here that I used, a uh, square tile texture, but I'm not going to be using those at all. And before we jump in, I want to show you guys that when you import Kitbash uh, 3D projects, you can see on the bottom that all the meshes missing all the textures 
and this is something that we'll have to work on to fill in all the textures. So we're going to create a new folder and we're going to call this Orc Village. Uh, the reason for that is because all my meshes were not imported into the folder like I've previously mentioned before. Make sure you do that. So if you ever do that, this is how you fix it. You just create a new folder, then you take all your meshes and then you hold shift and then you click. That will select it all and then right click and then you can or you can left click hold and then just drag it into the folder and then you do move here. Now it's going to rename all the assets and just going to move it straight into your folder. Once it's complete, open it back up, make sure everything is in there. And this is how you can move your meshes and textures and everything like that from folder to folder. But it's time consuming, so make sure you do it the right way the first time. Like I showed you in the Egyptian pyramids a project. I'm gonna slow down the camera a little bit so I can move a little bit slower. And we're gonna zoom out just a little bit. And then go back to our content uh, landscape brushes. I'm just trying to raise a little bit and create some hills. I forgot the name of the texture. So start with T sh sharp. I know I'm kind of going getting off the topic here, but I'm just trying to create a little bit of a landscape. Bear with me. Um, so that way it's has a flatter surface for demonstration and creation of this village that we'll be building. But I think in this video I'm only going to cover uh, texture parts and then there's going to be a follow-up video on it on how to actually use these meshes to create let's say a village. But I'm going to need tools for that so I'll have to import them first and then I'll be able to utilize them. So let's go ahead and raise this land just a little bit like that. And then I'm going to smooth it back out again so that way it's easier for me to place the meshes of all this orc village but we'll have to go back and retexture certain parts later and get rid of some of that grass and stuff like that so here's our textures they are highlighted in green and this one right here is called bark chart and if you open it up it will open the blueprint where it has a basic color parameter and we're gonna go ahead and create our own texture blueprint so that way it can read all the textures that came with this project so we're gonna go ahead and type in texture sample for some reason my screen went black and that was very strange let's go ahead and uh, co copy and create another one of those. So control C and control V to paste it again to make a copy of a same texture sample node. And I'm waiting for it to load since it's recording and uh, working on the engine at the same time. Here we go. So we got the second one in. And you can see right here there's no texture at the moment. And I opened up the folder to keep track of all the texture names. So right here we have bark chart. If you open up your folder, you have normal, height, gloss, and diffuse. So go ahead and drop in your normal into one of these textures. If it doesn't let you do that, you can always uh, type in the name. If we go back to our folder right here, and if you try to drop it in, you won't let you do that. So let's go ahead and create a uh, folder for textures first. We're going to drop them all in here. We're going to take all these textures and we're going to drop them into our texture folder. So left click and drag, drop it all in. It's going to import and for some reason keep getting the blank screen. Here we go. Now 
the engine just crashed on me, but uh, no worries, we're gonna fix this. I figured I'm gonna let you guys see the whole problems that I'm dealing with. So let's go ahead and back to this texture folder and rename it to textures. That's how I'm gonna fix it. So before opening up a project again, let's go ahead and rename it to textures. And we're going to, wow, great, it's not even responding now. But as you can see, if something like this happens, uh, do not panic, uh, it's fixable. We're going to go ahead and open up this texture folder and we're going to copy it. We don't even need to open it. And it's about 209 megabytes of textures. So I'm going to get out of my Unreal Engine projects and go to the island and content and orc village folder and textures right here. That's the new texture folder that we've created. I'm going to get rid of that and paste that new texture folder. So we're doing this manually since it for some reason crashed on me. Now, if you look up, if you scroll all the way to the top, the folder should be in there now with all the textures. Let's go ahead and reopen our engine with hopes that it will not crash on us again. Uh, again, things like this uh, are not predictable. And sometimes you just have to deal with them. But here we go. We are in our content folder. I've opened up the project again. If you look at the top it says the island now all i have to do is just now reopen the map the current map of the island and we're back to our bark chart texture where we left off with all the texture samples now of course none of those got saved so i had to redo the whole process but i figured i just skipped through it back to where i was and uh, here we are the landscape might look a little bit different because i had to redo all of that too uh, but we got the textures in, and what I'm going to do now is not rename it, but I'm going to copy the uh, normal map name. So you can press F2 on it, and then Control c to copy it. And then over here, we're going to paste it, Control v It's going to show up the texture in our texture sample map. We will have our normal map. And then right here, you can convert it to a texture object. Uh, I do not recommend doing that because it won't let you do convert to the normals because of the, the f format on that. If you drag it, it says texture 2D is not compatible with float 3. And in order for it to work, you'll have to change that to RGB channels. And we're going to undo the texture object. Uh, even if you try it with a mask, you, can, you see it does, it's not going to work. So do not do texture objects conversion when you trying to import all these textures so we're going to go back control z all the way back to the beginning and we're going to use the rgb channel to connect it to the normal now on the left it will show you the current view of your material it's a sphere and it has this grayish color because that's what's been assigned right now for the basic color now what we're going to do is we're going to take our diffuse color we're gonna copy it we're gonna rename it which is can be done right click and you rename that or you press f2 then control c and then to paste it now we are gonna go ahead and look it up well, wrong stuff for some reason it copied something else but for the new texture sample we're gonna go ahead and paste our diffuse and we're gonna bring it all the way to the top now this parameter is going to get disabled and we're just going to move it on the side and we're going to connect RGB to our base color. We'll drag it somewhere on the side for now. Let's line this up just a little bit. You can't really resize them, but here we go. Just line that up just like that. I drag it out a little bit. Next, we're going to add a math function to our uh, glossiness. Since glossiness is a texture, but it's an invert of the roughness texture, so we're going to create one minus. And what we're going to do is create another texture sample. Go ahead, drop that in. And now we can line this up in the way we need to. Now, of course, it's going to have a previous texture in there from the one that we copied. And we're going to change this to 
gloss control C control V to again to change this it's just pretty much repetitive so you, once you find the right texture you all you want to do is just take RGB connect that to here and then to roughness so that will be your uh, glossiness and to continue with the next texture I'm just trying to give, show you demonstration what it looks like with it and without it if you look closer to the textures and all the cuts that you see over there alright let's go ahead and add last one it's, which is going to be our height and then what we're going to do is add the bump offset for it next we're going to add a texture sample that's going to be our texture sample for our height and we're going to connect all this together in a moment now let's go ahead and choose the right texture again this one we, we're going to choose the height here you do not want to use the RGB channel because it needs to be uh, black and white but I'll show you a demonstration real quick let me zoom out bring all together now watch this one well, if I were to connect this to all the UVs it gives you an error it says that between the uh, the types of float and float uh, float 2 and float 1 are identified arithmetics between these so what you want to do is instead of doing that you do not want to convert it to the object either you can try it out again it's not going to let you do anything and it's going to tell you it's missing a height input and again this is something that you can always test out and try it out but like I've said before we're going to use the black and white channel so a channel is the one that we're going to use for this because it gives us an error and you won't be able to use that that texture and it won't load anything if you look on the left it's not loading the texture let's go ahead and use the black and white now it's going to load it up and now it shows you the bump offset it's a different scale from a greenish to reddish color tone but once you connect that to all the UVs you want to apply and save now I will get back and probably add um, metallic and specular later to this blueprint but we'll save this as is for right now and then we can probably throw this parameter into the base color as well I'm not sure if it was supposed to be in there, in there or not. Uh, we can take it out later, but I can show you how you can do that as well. You can do multiplier, and to undo this, you, you hold Alt and you left click it, and then now you can connect it all together just like that. So if you press on the line and hold Alt and then you left click, it will undo that. Now this is the base color. Uh, what the only thing I've noticed is that the parameters have been set. It recreated the texture in different uh, direction and it looks better so I decide to keep that with the multiplier so if you take that off and you take off the the multiplier as well it shouldn't be connected to that if it's a straight path between the texture sample and the base color you'll look close to the pattern of the texture and if I were to change it back to the parameter and multiplier it will change uh, the shape of it so I'm gonna change ch check that uh, keep that with the actual parameter and a multiplier just since it came with that I'm not sure if I'm gonna need it or not but once we start putting these meshes into the game we will see if we actually need those or not moving on this is only one out of many textures that we have to do you see right here we have three at the top and we have a couple on the bottom now some of the meshes start to show textures like this one right here oh no this one is not it's this one right here has a uh, just a red material doesn't really have a texture in it yet but on the bottom here we have at least six to seven more textures and we're going to go through all of them so this video is going to be about an hour and seven minutes, uh, an hour ten minutes, depending. Uh, but I want to fully cover as much as I can with texturing parts. So if you look at all these meshes, 
some of them come with multiple different textures so they're not going to fully load all the textures yet and we're going to save and copy this so we're going to left click and drag and we're going to press c for comment and we're just going to name it i don't know uh, a texture sample or I don't, I don't know texture blueprint but you get the idea you can just call it a texture and later down the road you can copy the whole blueprint and reuse it on other textures so we're going to call this texture set settings we're going to select it all not just the actual comment but reply and save it we can use this for the next texture the next one is bark new and we're going to go ahead and uncheck the parameter we'll zoom it back out and then if we do control v now unfortunately i only imported uh the command or the comment highlighter so we're going to go back and make sure that we actually select everything if you look at all of these texture samples they're all now highlighted in orange uh, we're just going to do Control c and then keep this window open go to the top left over here we're going to delete these texture settings comment and Control v to paste the whole code and now all we have to do is reconnect the dots and change all the textures to uh, according to the name of that material so if you look at the parameters, they're the same, which means you don't need this extra one. We can just get rid of that. This multiplier is going to go back to the base color. This right here is going to go back to our roughness and our normal is going to go to the normal. And the only thing that's left to do is to change all the textures based by their name. Since now we have a bark chart and bark new, they have the same textures which means now we have to change them going to bark new here we're going to change all the textures to bark new so if you look at the texture folder we have bark new diffuse gloss height and normal i'm going to go ahead and press f2 control c and now over here make sure you go to your normal maps control V to bring it up and repeat the process and the same it goes to the roughness and your base colors now here we're going to change it back to diffuse which is our albedo texture and the gloss is gloss so you can even do it this way you don't have to go jump and forth just as long as you have that main root of the texture name and then you switch it between the normal the height the gloss and the diffuse it should be pretty quick and simple to fill them all in I know it's a little bit tedious but I personally do not know any other way of doing this right now uh, or I don't know of any plugin that automatically fills that in but if you're using Unreal Engine and Cubash 3D Studio, this is one of the ways you can set up your textures. Not necessarily for Kitbash 3D projects, but pretty much for any other textured materials that you have. And this is a, a blueprint that I've kind of came up with, and you can find similar ones, and it's going to get improved. Like I've said, we're going to add some metallic and specular in it, so that way it looks a little bit different. and the reason I'm including all the textures in this video is because not all of them have the same settings. So therefore I'm trying to include everything that I've worked on here. Now I've played around a little bit with ma the normal maps and see if the mask would work or anything like that. And of course it doesn't load. So we're going to undo that, go back to normal, but a sample type, uh, it could be changed based on certain different textures and things like that they're trying to achieve. Let's go ahead and close down the material expression texture, material expression texture uh, sample and base. So 
this is pretty much done on this texture. I'm gonna go ahead and save it, uh, apply and save. Uh, we can go ahead and look at the example if we need to. But we have a couple more to go before we can fully uh, see what actually happened. Now you saw that little star on the bark new. That means the texture has not been saved. So make sure you control S to save it and that star will disappear on your mesh. Now again, we're just gonna re apply the same code as we previously did for the next texture, which is our fabric. Now this is this is gonna be a cloth, it's gonna be a little bit different. Uh, this one has extra textures. I'm gonna go ahead and apply the all original settings. So we're gonna have base, roughness, which is our gloss and our normal. Now, since it's gonna be a fabric, it doesn't really gonna have any gloss to it. Uh, more of a like a transparency or translucency to it that you can see through. But we'll cover everything in this blueprint in, in a few. I'm just trying to find these textures for the material. So here we go, our fabric material. We have one, two, three, four, five. And the last one is our, right here, opacity. It's a new, different type of texture that's going to be used specifically for translucency of an object. So if there's something that you, there's a hole in the material, you can see through it. I'm going to go ahead and control uh, F2 to bring up a name and then control C again and control V to paste it. We're going to go ahead and add that diffuse color or of the fabric into our texture sample for the base color and right here we have all five different textures opacity normal diffuse gloss and height i'm gonna go ahead and drop in our diffuse next is our normal and then over here for demonstration purposes i will drop in the glossiness of this fabric now i don't know why it's included in this particular project why there's glossiness and all the other uh, textures if you guys know why they're being used please let me know for what purposes or how i can use this again i'm not a master at creating these blueprints this is just something i'm trying out and see what works the best now again, if you're watching this video and you have a fabric material, do not do these, do not follow this specific step because I'm just showing you the result of using these textures for the specific material and it's just not going to look right because now we can't use the opacity anywhere on our settings. So we can save it and apply and save. Now, I guess you could use this fabric that has no holes on it. Let's say it does not need that and it could be used as this. And we can use that specific texture separately. And this could be used maybe for a clean clothes. So uh, don't get me wrong. This could be used for different purposes. But here, if you change the blend mode to translucent, you can see now that the settings have changed. And the blend mode determines w what you can access so for this one right here we're going to add opacity and then if we change the blend mode to translucent now we have access to opacity but if you noticed our normal map has been disabled so is the glossiness but you can see the holes now in the ripped material and there's different decals have been implemented as well now, that being said, this is exactly what we need needed for this texture. I will save this as this for now. And I can delete this if I need to or disable that fast. And if you try to add this to something else, it will. But, of course, this is going to be a wrong path. So you can't be just randomly clicking stuff into it. It will not load a mesh. And therefore, the glossiness and the height we should not be applied on the material that is being used as a translucent blend mode. 
So you have two different ways of doing creating this texture. But we're gonna go ahead and apply and save. Since it's gonna be more of a, like a ripped up material for our orc village. And here we go. I've keyed this to a plane mesh so that way it kind of represents a uh, a fabric as that's being stretched out. Or if you want to see a demonstration in a cube or a square. Yeah, you can do that as well in your viewport here. Let's go ahead and save it. Now we have three meshes or three textures done. We have one at the top, uh, the hay that needs to be done next. And right here we have the first mesh that actually has fully textured um, material. It looks pretty cool. So this is some sort of tarps or the material fabrics that are going to be going over the buildings. So this one right here is the next one is going to be hay. Don't really know what it looks like it's supposed to be a roof, but it's not textured because it doesn't have one. So let's go ahead and quickly create this one as well. And with the hay, we're going to speed up the process of importing the textures. It's a literally the same concept as the, uh, the first two. So if you repeat that, uh, we're going to go ahead and implement these as well, but I figured I'll speed up the process of it so that way I don't bore you too much since this video is going to be already long enough. But again, make sure that all the normals and all the other uh, diffuse textures are all correct and match the names. Otherwise, you'll get funky textures. Reconnect all your normals and your roughness. Now, for some reason, in this texture with the hay, it looks a very glossy. And something like this, we'll have to go back and rework. But for right now, let's go ahead and just save all the textures that we've so far created. I'm going to go ahead and speed up the process of the workflow that I've created here for lashing texture because it's pretty much the same concept as the other textures. Now, of course, if you want to slow it down, you can go ahead and do that in the settings for the video. You can slow it down to half a speed and it will be demonstrated at the regular speed, but it's just the same process. Just connect the same dots. And then we're going to do the same thing with the red rope. Now, the only difference with this texture uh, this rope comes with a very glossy and cloudy texture if you were to connect this using the glossiness to it. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that instead. And we still have that issue, but what we're going to do now is we're going to add metallic, specular, and roughness to it. And go ahead and type in uh, scalar parameter. And you can go ahead and rename it to material. And you'd want to create three of those. You can just control C, control V, and we'll just create three of those. And this one is going to be called specular. You can change it right here under the general to specular. And the last one to roughness. And we're going to connect the specular to specular. And change this one to roughness. And connect that to roughness as well. And now we have a default value of zero. We have slider minimum at zero and slide maximum at zero. It took care of all that weird uh, cloudy look. I just put a cylinder so you can see how the rope looks. Now the default value is going to stay at a zero, but the slide max, we're going to change that to one for all the materials. So that way we know that the zero is the uh, slider minimum and that stays at that default and that can be adjusted. But we're going to keep everything at zero for this specific texture. But for demonstration purposes, I can change that. So this one right here is metallic. Now let's go ahead and bump it up to 0.02 and then we'll change it back to 0 0.0 uh, if we change it to let's say uh, 0.5 
uh, for a specular. You'll start seeing that glassy, uh, glowing or glossy looking texture. Same thing applies for metallic. If it did type in 0.5, half of what the value is, it will be a metallic rope. <laughs> but it looks very unrealistic, so we're going to keep that at zero for all three. And then you can also test out the roughness for it as, as well. Add the half of the value and uh, play with it. Based on the materials and textures that you're creating, you can adjust the roughness, specular, and metallic. But I'll have to do more research into it first. There is a table that is available somewhere in Unreal Documents for all the different fabrics and materials. So for right now, I'll keep it 0.5. And then we'll come back to it maybe in the next video and adjust some of this stuff if we have to. But as of right now, I'm going to save it and replicate that for the red textured lashing and we're going to get rid of all the primers because we're not going to need it I think if we are to use the red it's going to be too dark since the diffuse red already comes with the red texture in it I'm going to keep it simple and we'll come back to the roughness metallic and specular later as well if we have to until we test out the meshes you can't really tell if the textures are as good as what we would want them to look like so for the rest of the mud rocky uh, textures and all the other ones the rock sharp rock smooth all these textures gonna share a pretty much similar blueprint as the first ones did so I'm gonna copy the black chart blueprint and copy it in here and then reconnect everything like I did with everything else and don't forget to use your texture folder reference for all your textures that you're using it's pretty simple to just copy the name and then paste it into your textures but I'll have to do some more research to see how we can expand these and add certain different textures to uh, other materials that are in this project see if we can combine certain other materials together and create um, more of a natural village look to it because based on the scene and location we'll have to adjust some of the stuff and use different plugins and other blueprints that we can use to create a different variation from the original project of the git bash 3d that they give us so it's gonna be very interesting on what we can do with this now as of right now the entire mesh is not destructible and can't be like really crafted or anything or taken apart to smaller pieces so it's actual construction blocks that are available to build this village but in the future we either will keep this or change this to something else so it depends on what we can come up with and use in the game and purpose uh, depending if this game is going to contain a certain blueprints that will help us let's say craft these structures so where you can actually build that in the game or set it up in a way where it's just a fixed building and you can't really do any damage to it whatsoever so since it's going to be made mostly out of wood and other materials the fabric it will be flammable so things like this need to be remembered as of right now we're only implementing textures into our settings and then from there we'll 
add this to materials and then from there we'll add more blueprints to change certain aspects of the actual material itself or the texture so let's say if something is catches on fire is this going to change the texture if it's raining in the game is it going to have a different look to it so there's going to be a lot of expansion going on for these blueprints but we'll save them but the best part you can always copy them and use them for something else so once you create this i will also see if i can upload this soon um, maybe not the same time when the video is up but i will have it in the description below for the available download of this blueprint so that way you can use it yourself for your projects and it will be easy for you to use that in the unreal engine or you can follow step by step and pretty much reuse any case that they have with other textures just reuse the blueprint and if anybody has a better suggestion of what i can make out of this or create a better blueprint uh, please give suggestions because we'll have to have uh, a lot of additions to it done where we'll have to resize the textures to a lower resolution and then so on so if you have any suggestion links drop them down in the comments below i will definitely look into it if you guys have any more questions always leave a comment below if i have time I will try to create a video just like this for any questions that might come up. And again, uh, this is also important to have in the game because this is something I was going to come up to sooner than later, but there will be a follow up video on this on how to use the actual meshes later. But first I have to finish adding ocean to the game and make a video about that and then the next one is actually applying all the blueprints to it and going through some documents on that project as well. So there's going to be somewhat jumping from one project to another since I'm doing quite extensive amount of work on this on my end. But once I get other guys projects in will be able to work together and then share all the projects on the server and now going back to this uh, video i am now uploading by clicking on the mesh to bring up a fully textured mesh since they're all looking without any textures at the moment but you don't have to do each individual i'm just trying to get familiar with these uh, meshes because I'm not have never even opened them before but this is going to be all the meshes that we'll be using to create our village now there's right here is some sort of fabric material and they're all supposed to go together and we'll we'll add them to the world and it looks like this right here is just a bunch of lashes supposed to go around uh, spikes of some sort and so those are like pre-built pieces like right here I guess lash is supposed to go on top of that and there's rooftop pieces it should be a pretty simple build almost like Legos I guess but <laughs> a little bit different and I will need some plugins for this because uh, not everything is set properly here and it'll be very interesting but at least we got the textures in so now instead of me just doing one by one I'll show you how to do a whole project at once you can always left click it and then drag over to the bottom and select them all so shift click and you select all the meshes and then you just open one and it should load up all the meshes with all their uh, textures just like that and now it's loading at the 50 percent and it will load all, every single texture to every single material because or every single mesh to the site because every single mesh may contain uh, between one to uh, multiple textures based on the mesh creation so 
we will be able to use these in our world we'll set them up together and then we can combine them later and i'll show you how it's done in a future video so that way we can create actual buildings and structures and then once we build basic foundation of what we're trying to build out of this uh, we can save them and then maybe even in the future add them to the game where players can have access to construction of these structures so similar to i guess arc or rust games uh the forest games like that i guess but we'll, we'll see if we can break it down even more to where it will take you resources that you'll have to physically carry and build i'm not sure depending on what the players actually would want to play maybe there will be an option for that as well in the game but as of right now uh, the goal is just to build a village so that way we can start creating scenes for all the cultures and i've already imported the egyptian one that's just something that's going to be uh, covered in the future videos pretty much all the steps are to build this game will be covered on this channel uh, it's going to take me some time since i'm doing the video editing and all the creation that you see on the videos myself so it takes a little bit of time but all the other products are done by other individuals and i'll try to leave a link in the description where i get these products and projects from who i get them from and what you can do with them so now i'm importing one project it seemed like it was really really small uh, mesh construct uh, construction part of some sort of a uh, hut now i don't have all the right tools that i need to play around with this now you can see that the pivot point is somewhere far away from the actual center of the mesh so I'll have to work on that later. And again, I'll show you what tools I'll be using to make it much simpler, because there's ways of doing it, but I don't like how far it is out and it's not actually in the center that you have to move it around. Uh, you can do it manually, you can change it, but uh, right now I will wait out on that because I'll have to install all the plugins. So I'll make a separate video on that as well. And I'll leave all the uh, links on that. So that way you can look into them guys through Unreal Marketplace very useful tools uh, here's another example of a, a rooftop that looks like it's supposed to go for this building and I'm just changing the scale of it and then every time I do that uh, it actually not only increases the mesh size but it puts the pivot point farther out and I have no idea what happened there uh, it looks like the object fell through the land it here you can see how far it is actually from the pivot point so the bigger the scale the farther away the pivot point appears to be and i'll have a pivot tool point that i'll be using to change all that so if it's uh, scale is at one and uh, it's in the center but still the pivot point is out so i'm going to delete these meshes and then we'll leave this for the next video so i'm going to wrap up this video I hope you guys enjoy this. Um, if you have guys any questions, leave the comment below asking whatever it might be related to. And I'll be uploading more videos hopefully this week. Uh, I'm going to be focusing on implementing the ocean to the islands as we already have one, but I have a better one. And it's more in depth and, and in detail. So we'll be covering that later in the next video. And then I'll be back to this one after I install all the plugins. And I already have all the vegetation that I've added from Megascans. But I won't be covering them until future videos as well. I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder for all my materials. I'm going to drop them in there too. All of these. So you can just select those and then uh, select the rest of these and i'm gonna just drop them in there and i think i'll create a separate folder for all the meshes too to keep it organized and as always thank you all for watching the channel thank you for the new subscriptions don't forget to like this video and subscribe and click that notification bell button if uh, you want to be notified for the next video